Next news out of Saudi Arabia. A Saudi ad refers to feminism, atheism, and homosexuality as forms of extremism. So this was shared, um, a video was shared by a Saudi Arabian security agency with a verified check mark, by the way. Uh, and they tweeted this video that said that feminism, homosexuality, and atheism are examples of extremism. Um, and they need to be opposed at all costs. Now, this is news and this is scary because under Saudi law, supporting groups classified as extremist organizations can lead to imprisonment. So... Imp yeah, I mean, a we are, we like, okay, so atheists in Saudi Arabia, we've been on the terrorist list for very, uh, for a while now, right? So we, we, we have honored, we have the honor of being there for, uh, this is not new, like atheism, not like spreading atheism, not like atheist propaganda, not like advocating for atheism, that hasn't been listed as just terrorism, just atheism, <laughs> right? Just being an atheist has been, so... You know, in 13 Islamic countries, in 13 countries in the world, atheism has been pun is punishable by death, right? All of them Islamic. Surprise, surprise. But in Saudi Arabia, they're like, let's go a step further. Atheism is not just punishable by death. Atheism is terrorism in Saudi Arabia. So we've been on that list for a while. But ap apparently now uh, homosexuality is extremism and feminism is also extremism. Um... But this is by, you said by a security, is that a government-based account, Twitter account? Um, I d I'm not sure if it's okay. government-based or not. So we need to look into that. But it's very, it's, it's before, and, and I know people, a lot of people might be tempted in our, uh, I'll see what the comments are. But some people might be tempted to be like, oh, feminism is extremism. And this is probably the people that took the red pill and stuff and be like, oh, well, feminism, they're right about that. You we're talking about feminism in Saudi Arabia, okay? This is this is the feminism, okay? Whatever you think about feminism in Western countries, they're li they're very very legit forms of feminism. I f I think still in some in, in some areas in Western countries, I do understand that they're extreme versions of feminism. That's a whole other deb debate. But if we're talking about feminism in Saudi Arabia, that is that is legit feminism, okay? That is like pure feminism that is very very much very much needed okay and the danger about labeling feminism in Saudi Arabia as extremism is that a lot of now if they be, if this kind of accusation becomes the norm there's a lot of human rights groups that are operating in Saudi Arabia that could just go like this right like what are they going to consider feminism? Are people that are that want women to vote in Saudi Arabia are they going to label them as extremists? Are they all every single woman that had a tweet about women driving? Uh, a woman that you know it's very interesting because in Saudi Arabia, even if they once they let women drive, they still go arrest people women that fought for women to be able to drive. So women w women driving became legal. But women that had fought for that becoming legal are still in jail to this day. Like, wait, why am I not free? The thing that I was fighting for is now the law. Why am I still in jail? They don't care. You fought the government, you're in jail. Like, a woman going to stadium it, is every single person that said, mention, you know, women should be able to go to stadiums. Are those now femi uh, feminists? Are they now every single one of them an, an extremist? This just gives authority to the government to be able to just easily uh, accuse anybody of being an extremist. And if you think that the, well, it was easy already, no, these things are complicated, right? Saudi Arabia does have to play around with normalizing something. It does care about its public image. It does, you know, they spend millions and millions of dollars trying to um, fix their image around the world. Uh, they need the tourism. And they are running out of cash. I know it's hard to believe with all the oil they have, but they are running out of cash. They are trying to sell their shares in Aramco, which is the world's one of the world's largest companies. Like they, they, they they're going through an IPO right now. There's you know oil prices are not high enough for them to be able to maintain their control. They need to diversify to find other sources of income other than oil, and that includes tourism. And for that to work, they need to fix their image. So these things do matter to Saudi Arabia, right? So 
putting out tweets like this and trying to label people as extremists, it, it is a slow. It, it is them testing the water, and it, there needs to be a backlash. Like if you think, of, well, of course it's Saudi Arabia, and you don't have a backlash to that, that's just gonna let, that just signals to them that okay, we can move forward with this, right? Just because it's Saudi Arabia, don't just normalize it and be like, well, yeah, of course it's Saudi Arabia. They are. They do notice the backlash. If the backlash is too much. They will back down. Even Saudi Arabia does back down, especially now. Especially now, they they are desperate for foreign uh, for their image around the world, right? And they're using celebrities. Anyways, that I'm going on a, ta on a tangent now. But but you, if you see stuff like this, you know, share this video, right? Embarrass Saudi Arabia. Like we ridicule Saudi Arabia. You, we need to make sure that the Vision 2030 that Mohammed bin Salman has for them to normalize to make it to create this beautiful image of Saudi Arabia um, and you know make people invest in Saudi Arabia and encourage tourism in Saudi Arabia that shouldn't work and you could be a small part of that if you are if you if you you know embarrass Saudi Arabia and everything they do as any chance you get and you could do that by sharing this video so what do you guys think you agree yeah all right <laughs> Rachel is saying, well, I mean, they would know what extremism looks like. Uh, Matt is saying, is there any way to change my badge from top fan to t well, top, ex top extremist? Because that would be cool. Yeah, I'm honored to be considered an extremist by Saudi Arabia. You know, I'll, I'll wear that badge any day. Uh, Shopam, any comment on this? I mean, I'm... Kind of extremist in all three of these parts, feminism, atheism, and <laughs> I'm pansexual, so yeah, that's also... Yeah, like, oh, so Saudi I'm, Arabia, why, why just homosexuality include pansexuals as well, yeah. right? I'm, I'm extremist times three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You, you almost, you kind of check all the boxes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the Osama Bin Laden for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, don't go near that country. Um, okay. No, but any, seriously, any, any celebrity or any organization that even touches touches anything Saudi related they need to be shamed they need to t you need to tell them that they have blood on their hand BTS from you know uh, South Korea they need to be shamed right um, uber uber you need to call them out any any organization right um, anybody that is investing in organizations that have large uh, large Saudi shareholders right they need to be called out right if you're if you're an investor if you have sh if you own mutual funds if you own stocks in uh, that has or companies like uber that has a lot of shares from saudi arabia you, you could do your part by selling those shares right call your well again i'm not a financial investor so don't you know uh, don't take my financial advice talk to your broker about that um and and celebrities that do listen to the public um they need to be celebrated i think it was Nicki minaj that was was going because saudi arabia is was using celebrities to to bring tourists to saudi arabia and you know Nicki minaj was invited to go and perform and there was a public backlash and i think it was correct me if i'm wrong but Nicki minaj backed down like okay i'm not gonna go because these people are executing gay people and i don't want to be a part of that that should be celebrated. You should people should see that there's not just a negative reaction when they don't listen, but there should be a positive reaction when they do listen. But organize but but celebrities like BTS, they didn't listen. They heard and they're like, oh yeah, this is a difficult decision, but we're still gonna go. They need to be called out. They need to be embarrassed. They need to be like, okay, BTS, you the money that you're making, it has it, it has gay people's blood on it. Just realize that you're making money out of by promoting, uh, uh, you, you're supporting the killing of gay people, right? Just, just remember that, you know. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, you. Uh, I think uh, if I remember correctly, BTS went to South uh, Saudi Arabia, but they were not allowed to perform because they looked gay. I think that was the case. Wait, what? I think uh, they were not allowed to perform uh, because they looked gay. Who wasn't allowed to perform? BTS. Uh, BTS. Okay. In Saudi Arabia. Wow, I didn't know that. But even but that was not their decision. They were invited, yeah. and BTS even after the backlash, they said we're still gonna go. So now that they're not allowed to go, 
um, that's the Saudi decision. That's not their decision. So they still should be condemned. They still should be no, condemned. I, I, yeah. My yeah. point was like, uh, mm. they should know that uh, Saudi Arabia is homophobic because they were not allowed to perform for just yeah, but they s- looking gay, which doesn't even mean a thing. Yeah, but it's, f- but it's so disgusting when they looked at how much money they were m- going to be making. And they also looked at their whole community telling them like, hey, why are you going there? These people are, you shouldn't be supporting bringing tourism to Saudi Arabia. And they were like, yeah, but the, the money though, they're paying us so much. And they should never be forgiven for that. Um, yeah, but, but thank you. I didn't know that. I will look into that. I didn't know that. I mean, that's great. So they were now, they're not even going to make that money. I hope that's true. Uh, so even after they said yes to it because of the money, they, d- they end up not making that money? Good. I hope that's true. If I, if I remember correctly, that happened. Okay, let us know if that happened in the comment section. All right. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.